Welcome back to Fast Monty's Garage. Today we're putting in a digital stepper motor fuel pressure gauge. Those of you that are part of the channel are probably thinking to yourselves, Mike, you already put gauges in. Why didn't you just do another gauge? That's a great question. I'm going to cover that in a second. Now, those of you brand new to the channel, welcome. I need to explain to you the three different types of gauges. So the playlist I did was for mechanical gauges. Mechanical gauges actually take the actual reading from wherever you're measuring from and send it somehow to the gauge. And that gauge does not need power. And that's a benefit, but it's the hardest to install. For example, the water temperature gauge we put in has a probe on the end that sits in the, in the water, measures the temperature, that heats up a gas in a tube. That gas changes in uh, pressure and the gauge monitors that pressure and that's how the needle moves. Yeah, it's pretty neat. You don't need power. And it reads without power. So you turn the car off, I still have the water temperature. Yeah, it's pretty neat, but it's the hardest to install. Now, the reason I have the water temperature gauge is I was second guessing my standard gauge. Now, the standard gauges we have in older cars are called an air core gauge, and you can still buy air core gauges from Autometer or whatnot. The way they work is with a sending unit. So that sending unit is screwed into the manifold, but it relies on an electrical ground path from the gauge to the engine through the engine of the ground strap. And you cannot put Teflon tape in between the thread on that sending unit and your manifold because that affects the ground path. That gauge, the air core gauge, measures the resistance in the wire. So based on temperature, the sending unit changes resistance and the gauge changes accordingly. That's how air core works. Now, digital stepper motor, most expensive but most accurate, and it does not rely on the ground path. So we're gonna put a sending unit in and run a wire that is powered by the gauge to get the data. I can't wait to do it. Now, here's why. A lot of you called me out on the mechanical gauge aspect. So as I mentioned earlier, an oil pressure gauge, you have a capillary tube from the oil pressure area on your engine. So it actually has oil in it. If that plastic line, it's tiny. I'll show you a picture right here. It's tiny. So if that should fracture, you get oil all over yourself and it'll most likely be uh, 190 degrees. <laughs> so it's not going to be fun. Not a good thing. Now, even worse than that was the fuel pressure gauge. Now I did something. I took life into my own hands and I ran a high pressure line into the cabin, which you're not supposed to do. Yeah. Sometimes I live life on the edge. So that high pressure line is a braided AN hose. That hose ain't, is not going to split or fracture or anything, but the gauge could, and you can have fuel in your, in, your, um, in your cabin, not a good thing. So we're gonna kill two birds with one stone today. I'm gonna take that fuel pressure gauge out and that line, but I'm gonna repurpose that line. Here's a, here's a picture of it. I'm gonna repurpose that line for the oil pressure line. So now I won't have to worry about the plastic cracking or fraying or, or rubbing on anything because we're gonna put a 2000 PSI braided stainless AN hose on there. That's nothing gonna happen to that. So I'm excited. Let's get to the workbench. Let me show you what comes in the box here and our plan of attack for our mission today. Here's what comes in the box. It's pretty simple. Oh, by the way, this is kit number 3863. I know it's tough to read. 3863. I'll leave a link below uh, where I bought it so you guys can get the same deal. Anyway, uh, so sending unit, this is the big difference. So we have to figure out where to put this and the, I'll show you where I mounted the mechanical line. I'm going to try and mount it in the same spot, um, but you can find anywhere you want on your pressurized line. And there are different tricks to do that. Um, one is you can get an AN fitting if you have AN lines and some AN fittings have a side port where you can put in a 1 8 NPT fitting. And that's exactly what that uh, thread is. So we have a wire harness uh, that you need to drill a big enough hole in your firewall to get that plug, either plug through. And I already have a pretty decent hole from when we ran that other line. I'm gonna try and use the same hole. And uh, comes with another adapter. 
So if you have a quarter inch MPT to one eighth and instructions. So I already read the instructions. It's actually pretty simple. There's only three wires. We have 12 volt keyed on the red, ground, and lighting. So when you, when you do your lights, power to that wire. Since I already did the wiring for the lights from the other gauges, that's easy. I just have to find that power wire. Now I'm going to go ahead and take out the existing fuel line and I'll show you guys where I mounted it. This is where my source is for my fuel pressure. It's on the back side of my throttle body. So this is one of the fuel rails. So it's a great spot to get fuel pressure. It's also the highest point of this line. So when I take this off, um, I'm gonna have a rag under here, make sure I catch any fuel. There right, we go. Boom. I love and fittings. They just screw on and off. And let's see if any fuel is in here. There's probably a little bit. Oh, I do have a check valve in my line, so it doesn't surprise me. There's a little bit of fuel in there. I'm gonna point this up and see if I could point this at the ground and empty it out. And here's the other end, which is not recommended. They don't recommend putting fuel into your cabin. Duh, I know a lot of you guys are screaming at me for that. So let's try not to make a mess. All right, I got the old gauge out and right away I'm already upset. Look at that. Does this look like chrome to you guys? Nope, sure doesn't. That's chrome. This matches my, the bezel on the stock gauges too. So uh, I did read somewhere that you can actually send this in and obviously for a fee and AutoMeter will change this to Chrome. So I think my game plan is we're gonna mount this in the middle. The oil is in the middle right now. So we'll put the oil on the outside. This will be in the middle. At least give some symmetry. And if it doesn't upset me too much, then I'll leave it. But if it does, then I'll send it in because it's just a plug on the back. Send it into AutoMeter and get the Chrome bezel put on. Unless this just comes off, I might think about that, but <laughs> okay. Anyway, got the line out as you guys saw. Now, if you missed it, go check out the video. I think it's over here. Go check out the video I did on installing this where I had to drill a hole in the firewall and mount this um, little gasket. So you, what, the trick is you split it, you put it over the hose and then you weasel it in the ho into the hole. Now, since we have a wire harness, I'm going to utilize the same gasket because I already have the hole and I'm just going to put the wires in there like that. So then I can still use the same hole for the line, for the new oil pressure line. And that'll work just great. So that worked out in my favor. Now let's talk about how we mount this up. So if you guys saw in the back of the throttle body, I have a size 6 AN fitting and you can get different sizes and different fittings. I couldn't find a six female and a female one eighth MPT. So I went to the hardware store, got a coupler. And just like that, that's what the contraption's gonna look like. And then the wire harness plugs in there. I'm going to put PTFE tape on here, but make sure if you use tape, use the yellow tape. This is actually fuel, fuel proof. The white tape is not, it will deteriorate, or you can use uh, PTFE oil, put that in there. So that's what I'll do to assemble this little guy. All right, it's on there. Another thing I love about AN fittings is they have swivel heads, so I can swivel it down. The reason I have it like this is because the air cleaner comes right over this angle. So right there is perfect. So now, we can tackle taking the distributor out because the oil pressure port is right next to the distributor hole. Oh boy. All right team, before you pull your distributor, if you have a Pontiac or Chevy engine, make sure your, your um, point is pointed to a, a point of reference. Like this is straight back to my firewall. You can even put a piece of tape and mark it with a pen because you want to put it back in in the same orientation. Now, if it's off center like mine was, it was over here. You wrote, put the engine in neutral, transmission in neutral, rotate the engine clockwise, clockwise, and on Pontiac, this goes counterclockwise. Chevy, it goes clockwise. So I rotated it back. I'm good to go. Now I can take it out. Voila! And now you can see the oil pressure 
port on the back there. Make sure you cover that distributor hole because that will be a bad day. You drop a fitting down in there. So this guy here is a 1 8 NPT that goes into this um, conversion to a 3 8 NPT. So if you have a Pontiac block, this is a 3 8 NPT thread in there. And that's a 1 8 for our new adapter. So let's hit the workbench. I'll show you what adapters we have to use. All right, here's what we're working with, ladies and gents. This is a Dash 4 AN line. This is an auto meter kit. Again, I'll leave another, another link below for this kit. It actually comes with some fittings. I know this is one of them. So it's a 1 8 NPT on one end, Dash 4 AN on the other. And if this is in our block, I know it's not the same size, but this is in the block. So I'm going to put this in the block fitting like that. Then we can attach our hose directly to it like so. So that's one end. The other end on the gauge, this is a 1 8 MPT thread on the gauge. So we need an adapter. I actually had to buy one and I frankly don't remember if I lost it, it came with the kit or not, but I went to Summit. It's like six bucks or seven bucks. And that will screw on the back of the gauge and the hose will screw on to that. So again, I'm going to use uh, this PTFE yellow tape on the 1 8th MPT thread. You do not have to use it on AN fittings. Like a glove, as they say. I mean, look at this. It, was, it must have been plant, meant to be because this AN line is a rear cooling trick for my heads going through my existing hole. And if you haven't seen that, uh, go check out the mechanical uh, gauge installation where I cut this hole. And our next trick here is let me show you where the oil pressure gauge is. And as you can tell, that also fit like a glove. So if the gauge is on the right, uh, the fuel gauge is going to go in the middle. And now we get to talk about wire harness because the wire harness needs to come. I'm going to follow the same path all the way to right back in here is the fuel sending unit. So that's going to work perfectly. And this is the distributor hole. So the distributor is going to fit just fine because this moves. I can move this out of the way. So looks like we're golden. Let's get to that wire harness. So I apologize if I forgot to mention when you install a gauge, you want to make sure you have your starting point and end point known. So for example, on the oil pressure gauge, we have the gauge location in the car and then we have the location for the pickup point on the engine and then you have to map where you want to go drill your hole in the firewall so same kind of thing with our new um, gauge i know where this is going it's going in that ga gauge pod and i know where the sending unit is so now we have this crazy length of wire and since i have excess of what i've always wanted to try was to was to make this make these twisted like that so I saw this trick online where I'm going to give it a shot right now. Let's see how it goes. All right, guys. So check it out. The connector fits in my drill. And then the other end is in my padded vise here. And this wire is about eight feet long. And I'll show you here where I only need about, I don't know, let's call it uh, three feet. So one rule of thumb is you could cut this wire shorter and splice the wires, right? So, but I've always wanted to try this trick of braiding the wire and you're supposed to, supposedly, I can just turn the drill nice and slow and it's starting to wind the wire and keeping some tension on it. Or maybe you can do both, splice it, braid it or spin it and then roll up the excess. So I'm going to go ahead and try all this in the car, see how much excess there is. If there's too much, then I'll trim it and, and splice out a section. But I've never tried this trick. It actually works pretty good. I realize it's tough to tell, but here's where the gauge goes into one, the harness. There is way too much wire here. <laughs> so I'm going to go to plan B. And the beauty about wire harnesses is you can remove them work on them 
put them back in. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this here. And then since I know my gauge goes here, and that's where I want to be for the new length. Okay, team, when it comes to splicing wires, I'm going to show you my two favorite things. One is a posi lock, which is this guy here. So it has a metal connector inside. And on each end has this screw cap where you actually put your spliced wire in, push it down in there, and then screw it together. Super nifty, especially if you, if you have or need to remove a wire or remove an assembly, you can just unscrew these and reuse it. Now, if you're in a situation where you want some waterproofedness and it's gonna be permanent, like this situation, which I'm probably gonna use these, these are called um, shrink tubing, but it, there's um, solder in the middle. And I'll leave a link below for this. It's on Amazon. But that is solder in the middle, and it's like shrink wrap, or shrink tubing, sorry. So if I have the two wires um, twisted together, it doesn't have to be super tight, but then you slip it over. And then I'm going to take my heat gun. And you can see the shrink tubing shrinking around it. And the solder should start melting here. There it goes. And that is waterproof and soldered together. That is awesome. Almost there. So here's my uh, solder splices that I put in there. And I've put a shrink wrap tubing over it. So all three are in there. Still have my light little twist going on in that wire. So that keeps them all together. And then this here if you're wondering, is my little wire harness I made when I put the mechanical gauges in. So there was actually three light bulbs. I cut the middle one off because we still need uh, switch power when I turn on the lights. And then this is ground. And I use the, the locks where I can remove this because I'm going to remove this because I can't stick this through the hole of the firewall. So I just want to show you what it looks like when it's in the car. And these connections are clearly already in the car. That leaves one left. The one left is the power lead. And they recommend we add a three amp fuse. So I have this guy, this is overkill for gauge, but it's the only one I have. So I need to figure out where to put it, where to run it inside the car. So the next time you see this image, this will be installed. And if you've never done this before, there's this slips on the back like that, obviously through the holes. And then you use the lock nuts that came with the kit and it holds it into your gauge panel. So I'm getting excited. Let's see what happens here. So I found a nice accessory line to use underneath the dash. I didn't want to film it. It's hard enough to get my head in there. <laughs> so I use these cool things also from Posa Lock Company. They make these things called Posa Taps. So the end of it, sorry, this end, you can actually put over the wire you want to tap into, and then you see that spike that goes right into that wire. So that taps into it. And then you use the other end just like we did before. So that's what I used. And let's go I'll show you the distributor. I put it back in and then we'll uh, see if it works. <laughs> All right, distributors back in. This is the new oil pressure line. It goes right around the distributor and then straight down, fits perfectly. And this is an HEI distributor, so this is probably the worst case scenario. It's a fat distributor. So if you guys are running a standard distributor, it'll fit easy. And then here's the wire to the fuel pressure sending unit. I might put another zip tie on here just to keep it, keep it with, the, um, with that hose. But so far, we can still test it. So let's jump in the cab. All right, here we go. So it's some random number. It's supposed to do some calibration. Uh, so when I key on, uh, the, the throttle body is supposed to turn the pump on. So the pump should start pumping. This should do some kind of sweep. So I'm just going to key on. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It works. All right. Now we got to test the oil pressure. I still haven't done my timing yet, but uh, it should start. So... Let's give it a whirl. Yes! We have oil pressure! It works! Two birds, one stone. That worked out 
brilliantly. Uh, the only thing that's going to probably drive me nuts is the different bezel on the center gauge versus the other two. So we'll see how that weighs on my conscience. Uh, I do know the plan B is to actually call Autometer and they'll customize it for you. And who knows what that means? Yeah, right. So the two birds, if you're not familiar with the mechanical gauge, the oil pressure gauge especially uh, comes with a plastic tube, as you saw, and that can get brittle over time. Uh, it can, if any too much heat gets to it, it will melt. You'll have a leak. Uh, it could get cut. Uh, plan B to that is a copper tube. Now the copper tube is also finicky because if you bend it too much, it's brittle and it will break. But nothing beats an AN line. No one promotes that on the Autometer site or anything. So that is what I'd recommend for your mechanical oil gauge. I love it because I love AN fittings. Now, why did I do go through all this? I was invited to go drag racing. So next video, I hope to have some eight mile drag racing numbers. And I've never done official drag racing before. I've only done red light to red light. So I'm a little nervous, so it's going to be fun. So hang out, subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, build them fast, drive them faster. See ya.